all right so how to do bx can tx by using stm32 cube api so first of all you have to know what exactly is the data structure available for you in order to work with tx path there is actually a data structure called can tx header type that in the stm32 cube where you actually encode all the header details of the frame so what are the header details if you are using standard identifier then specify that standard identifier value by using this field if you are using extended identifier then put that extended identifier value in this field ide which specifies the type of identifier for the message that will be transmitted so ide you have to mention it as either standard frame or uh, extended frame okay rtr rtr decides whether you are trying to send a data frame or a request frame and dlc so dlc is your length i mean the payload length now so this structure doesn't have any field for data so data you can give as an external uh, buffer so that we'll see later now once you fill up this uh, header info then you can call this api in order to uh, transmit your message okay that means this api will put that message into the mailbox and then it will trigger the transmission so here you can see that in this api you have to give the pointer to the handle pointer to the header which you just filled up in the last structure and also you should uh, you know mention the data over here okay so which is an array and also and once you do that okay the api this api will find out which mailbox is free and it will uh, put your data into that mailbox and it will trigger the transmission and the api will let you know which uh, mailbox is used in this variable okay so it will update this variable for letting you know which mailbox is used now let's go to our eclipse and let's start coding hey welcome back so now let's uh, complete this uh, function so before that let me create a variable for the transmission header so can tx so what is the structure so can tx header type right so let's create a variable all right so now let's fill this up so first dlc so how many uh, bytes you want to send so let's send hello so five bytes right okay and after that let's ignore external id let's not use it so let's use standard id so use one number so let's say six five uh, d or something whatever okay now tx had a uh, so tx header ide so what is the ide so you have to select the proper value here so this specifies the type of identifier so you can take the reference from here so what are the options available for us yeah so it is basically asking what exactly is that id so you want to go for standard frame or extended frame let's use standard okay great so let's define here and after that tx header so whether it is a data frame or request frame so that you have to mention by using rtr field so in the rtr so you have two options here so you have to check this reference so we have to select the data it's a it's not a remote frame it's a data frame okay now so remote frame is also called as request frame remember so interchangeably we use that name it is data after that we'll see in when we do other exercises we'll see to send request and get the response okay now what are the other fields we have to set up let's find out so we use this this is done this is done okay so transmit global time that you can ignore okay so we don't use this you can only use this field in the time triggered communication mode great now that's it apart from that what is the message so let's create a message so you int 8 uh, our message okay so let's create a message all right now after that so we have to use hal 
can add TX message, right? So let's use this. So first one is first argument is handle H can one, then is the header that is the TX header. After that, what is the third argument? Third argument is uh, data, and then you have to send the address of one UN32 variable. So that is the mailbox. Okay, so let's create that variable. Okay, so here let's create uint 32 uh, underscore t mailbox. Okay, and you have to send the address of this. And here after that third argument is the data, isn't it? So that is our data. I just mention here. And after that, address to a variable. That's it. So now, does it return anything? Yes. Okay, status. Now that's why we have to check if error hand. Great. So that's how you transmit. Now let's compile. Let's see whether it has any errors or not. Okay, so no errors. Great. So now after that, so if you just trace this uh, API, so let's go into this API. And if you just browse through this, here you can see that the mailbox variable is getting updated here and also you can see here at the end what happens is it actually requests transmission here so it actually sets a tx or qubit in the control register all right so that's how the transmission happens so once the transmission happens you have to wait until that ends so let's use a polling mode here in this application now in the next exercise let's see how we can do that using interrupt so i would use a while loop in order to wait until the message is transmitted successfully so for that uh, you can use an api for example uh, in the driver file you will see a function called so let's search here this this api can is tx message pending so check if transmission request is pending on the selected mailbox okay so this api actually returns zero if uh, no pending transmission request okay otherwise it will return one great now let's use this all right now let's go to main and let's send the address of hcan1 as well as the mailbox number so the mailbox number is already updated here isn't it so let's use that here and let's give a semicolon here so so it will wait until it returns zero so if it returns zero then the while loop terminates okay so that means messages are not pending so here we can print something so here i will just print that message got transmitted successfully okay. so here i will just use uh, hl you are transmit in order to uh, send a message so here I've just used S printf in order to create a message into the buffer msg so which I have defined here great so then I'm just sending that buffer over UART great so we have implemented cantx and let's test so before testing this application we have to do one more setting in our application otherwise your bx can peripheral will not work properly that is we have to take care of the bx can operating mode so in the next lecture let's explore the bx scan operating mode so this diagram you are going to see in the uh, reference manual so just open that i will explain what exactly this means in the next lecture